Hey everybody, it's that time again to take a look at something from China, and look, the N-Gage is back! Well, kind of, in a cheap and nasty way, or maybe it's a good way. This is the Ken Chao Da <laughs> game phone, the Ken Chao Da, I presume that's how you pronounce it. This is the K110, and yes, this device is the answer you've been looking for. Or maybe it isn't. This is an old school 2G phone that plays games. Let's take a look and see what it says on the back. So as you can see, we've got a 2.8 TFT display, super big torch, oh yeah. Big speaker, believe me, the speaker in this thing is very loud. We have a large capacity battery, which I believe is 2600 milliamp. High pixel camera, uh, yeah, and um, approximately 100 of classic mobile games. Mmm, I wonder if that's true. Okay, so that is the box, but what do you get inside? Well, you get the following. You get a power brick. They all come in these labeled bags, same as the machine. You get a nasty pair of headphones. You get a battery. Oh yes, there's the battery, 2600 milliamp, as mentioned, and you get two little bits of paper. Now, I really, really love the message on here. If you have any problems with the game content, all right, please contact the seller after sales service department to solve it. Basically, what the saying is, um, don't bother contacting us because we don't care. Contact the person who you bought it from. Because this thing claims to have a hundred and odd games built in, right? Well, actually, there's no instructions at all on how to access them. So how do you access them? Well, we'll take a look in a moment. So let's take a look at the actual device itself and here it is. As you can see, it's kind of shaped like a PSP. Nothing special there. The buttons are, for all intents and purposes, perfectly fine. They are very solid. It's made of plastic, but it doesn't feel too cheap, actually. It feels like an old, you know, late 90s uh, mobile phone. Got a pretty solid looking D-pad there as well. Across the top of the machine, we've got some LED lights because it's got a super bright touch. We've got a pretty bad camera on the back of it. We'll take a look at that later on. Uh, we've got a headphone socket here, a uh, micro USB input there, and uh, that's about your lot. So to put the battery, oh, and the earpiece is up here. So to put the battery in, we have to go old school and actually open up the machine, which is very simple to do. Just uh, we get our fingers under the side here, and uh, we try to open, if I can. Just like that and just check out the size of that speaker that is one loud speaker that's for sure now unfortunately I can't show you this working connected to the network because here in this part of Japan where I live there are no 2G networks 3G is as low as it goes and this thing is 2G so I can't connect to any network even if I wanted to unfortunately but for those of you who can connect to 2G, we've got two SIM card slots there and a micro SD card slot. And what I'll do is I'll put a micro SD card in it right now. Now to put the micro SD card in is a little bit tricky. What you do is you uh, push this metal cover up and then it flips open and you just place your SD card in there. All right, and then you close it back down and push away. And there you go, that locks it into place. And let's put in the battery, which has half a charge on it at the moment. All right, let's clean up that screen a bit. Okay, so to power on the machine is very simple. You just hold down this red button here. Wait for it. Oh yeah, didn't I tell you that was loud? <laughs> 
and the back isn't on properly there we go all right so you can see it's gone straight to the music player for some reason now it's not a touch screen even though it would seem like it is a touch screen but it's not so you can't touch it basically this button uh, activates this option here and this button activates this option there so we just want to go back okay and into the menu and straight away you can see we've got some various options typical stuff really we've got the phone book which of course is empty we've got messages which are again empty telephone calls you can make phone calls you can actually access Facebook on here but unfortunately this device has no Wi-Fi so it's impossible for me to connect to uh, the internet which is a shame here we can see different features we've got a calculator calendar alarm and torch let's check out that torch we can put it on to open are you ready watch this oh yeah that is actually quite a powerful light to be honest that is very handy I'm uh, kind of impressed with that it's better than the light you get on modern mobile phones it's solid that is and oh man's blinding me <laughs> and um you can also set it to sos so it flashes the sos signal lovely stuff all right let's switch that off so it is possible to connect to bluetooth using this device and the only real uh, point i can see of this is basically to send files from this phone to another phone so uh, let's take a look here and see if we can actually connect it up. So here we go with a modern smartphone. All right, just uh, put my fingerprints in there. Okay, and let's see if we can find the the, uh, the Bluetooth on this. Uh, search for Bluetooth devices. Search. Ah, there it is. All right. Pairing up. Uh, it's uh, taking its sweet time to connect. There we go, we're connected. Okay, well, um, let's see what we can do. Right, let's see. Memory card, Bluetooth file storage. All right. Memory card. Oh. Maybe I can send an item to this phone via this phone. Okay, well, let's check that out. Let's see. Let's go into the photos. It will send this picture of the toad. Taken on this phone. All right, how do we do it? Bluetooth. Okay, send it via Bluetooth. There's the device. There. Confirm if you want to. Yep. Confirm that. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, we can see that it is possible to send files from one Bluetooth device to this phone here. Seems to be working no problem whatsoever. And as a comparison, Let's just see how good this picture taken on this phone looks on this screen. <laughs> Probably nowhere near as good. Let me just uh, clean up this screen a little bit. All right, let's get this picture up and into its proper resolution. Okay. Succeeded. Okay, well, let's uh, open up the picture. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't look like the picture has worked, does it? Um, hmm. Hmm. Good stuff. <laughs> Apparently, it seems to be that this picture is too high in resolution to even display on the screen. Um, all right, I'll tell you what. Not such screen is it? Oh, 
there it is it's now appeared it seems to be very slow okay let's start that up again no okay well apparently this device cannot display the photograph it's in the book it's in the thumbnails here it is you can see just there but it's uh, apparently not gonna display it which is a shame okay well anyway we know the Bluetooth transfer function does work okay let's take a look at some more of the functions of this device okay let's try and play a video on it I put a video onto the SD card we've got a sample video taken with my main phone over there let's see if it'll play that unsupported format okay well we've got a video file here this is an mp4 video file will it play it okay well it plays the sound but it's not playing the video so um yeah unsupported format as well so it's not firing too good here all right let's take a look at uh, music see if it'll play any music so we've got um, a classic mp3 here recorded at 320 kilobytes per second at 48 kilohertz or megahertz should that should be well it is playing that that is a good thing and um, I better turn it off because I don't want to get done for copyright protection. But as you can clearly hear, the speaker on this thing is very, very loud. Okay, let's get that off. Oh god, it's still playing. How do I switch it off? There we go, we switched that off. Oh no, it's off again. Stop. Alright. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very loud, isn't it? Alright, so going to the game section, remember on the box it said we had over 100 games or close to 100 games built in. Well, that's what we have built in. Sokuban. That's it. And it's not even a good game of Sokuban. There you go. Very basic. As basic as you can get. Yeah. Yeah. Not very impressive, is it? Alright. So, um, what you have to do to actually get the games to be available on here is dial in a special hidden code okay so the secret code you have to enter is as follows you press the star star oh and it speaks it pound sign pound and then the numbers two, two five eight eight succeeded switch to the game yes please 84 in one all right so it actually has a built-in ROM of uh, Famicom games yeah all right well let's uh, start them up we've got the typical selection as usual let's go for good old double dragon number five what the hell was that Wow, just wow. Man, that speaker is loud. Can we turn that down? No. <laughs> oh, okay, we can step the volume up using this button. We'll keep it on that level for now. <laughs> it's easier to hear me then. Okay, this one sounds good. Yeah, okay, so as you can see, it's a typical Famicom clone. Nothing too special there, is there? So let's take a quick look through the list of games and see what games we have. 
Okay, so as I'm flicking through this, if you see anything you fancy taking a look at, pause the video and jot down the names. But there you go, that's what's on it. So, the last thing to take a look at on this device is the camera. How good is it? Let's check it out. And here's a look at the quality of the video recording on this device. As you can see, it is extremely choppy. And um, doesn't focus very well, <laughs> has to be expected. So there we have it, that is the Ken Chowder mobile game phone. Um, you know, as a Famicom emulator, it's basic, you know, it does what it does, it plays Famicom games. Uh, build quality wise, you know, it's just like, a, as I said before, a late 90s mobile phone, nothing special, nothing unusual about it. It's pretty solid, the buttons feel decent. Um, Phone functionality, well, that's something we can't test because, as I've said, we don't have 2G uh, phone networks here anymore, so I can't test the uh, functionality of the actual phone. But we do know you can transfer data with using Bluetooth with it, and it does have that pretty nifty torch on the back of it. Um, currently, you can pick this up for around about $25. Um, if you really need some emergency phone or something, I don't know, then... Yeah, maybe this is worth uh, your time, but uh, I mean, if you're gonna buy a Famicom clone, buy a Famicom clone. If you want something to which you can make phone calls on, then yeah, you may as well buy a cheap <laughs> smartphone actually, come to think of it. So, um, yeah, what's this device for? Who knows? But I'm sure somebody out there will find this uh, attractive. All right. Take it easy guys, coming up next time we've got another Famicom clone and one that is uh, probably going to be pretty good because the maker of it, Family Pocket, are known for making quality products. So I'm looking forward to checking that one out. Until then, keep on gaming and enjoy your games. See ya.